18, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said to him, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And then Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm going to stop here. Some of us are familiar with this section. So to give a little bit of context, Jesus and his disciples went to Caesarea Philippi. It is a region where the Romans settled. So there really wasn't a big presence of Jews at that place. So they went to a place where they could get away from all of the arguing. Uh, sometimes I want to get away from all the arguing in church too. I, I want to get away from some of the board meetings or, or some of those Sabbath schools that we have always arguing. But they, they got away to this, this place. And Jesus asks two questions. The first is directed to his disciples that I believe he's directing to us today. The first is, who do everyone else say that I am? Right? Right? What's everybody else talking about? What's everybody else tweeting about? What's everybody else blogging about? What is everybody else saying about Jesus? And some say, okay. Some say that you're a teacher. Some say that you um, are a prophet. Some say this or that. Okay, so that's what everybody else is saying. But then Jesus brings the question a lot closer, and he asks them directly, but who? I hear what everybody's talking about. But who do you say that I am? Now, that's a very important question. That's a foundational question of our faith today. We call ourselves Seventh-day Adventists. We call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves, we call ourselves Protestants. But we call ourselves followers of Christ, do we not? But who is Jesus Christ? Who is he? That's a found, if we cannot answer that question, we might as well just quit now. Because Jesus is the one that called us to love him. So who, you can talk back, who do you say that Jesus is? Our Savior. Our Savior. Our Savior. Very good. Best Our best friend. And you say the only begotten Son of God. You say that he is the exact representation of who God is. That's right. <clears throat> okay. I'm hearing a lot of good things about who this Jesus is. And what is, what is Peter's response? He, he is the Christ. The Son of God, right? Christ, the hope of the Jewish nation, the hope of the world. He is the one that was foretold in Scripture that would come to take away the sins of the world. He would be the one that would be the sin bearer. He would be the one that we would call one day Alpha and Omega. He is the one that we would one day call Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the Christ. And then... Notice Jesus' response. Verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So the very, the very identification of who Jesus is does not come from us. It comes from a divine source. Amen. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build, what's the word? Church. My church. <coughs> My church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I love this verse. And I studied this verse because it's the first time church is ever mentioned in scripture. Matter of fact, I'm actually writing a book on the church. And this particular passage is very fascinating to me. Because he says that my church, I will build my church, and we know that the church was not built on Peter because that is not a very solid foundation. The church that Jesus founded was on himself, who is the cornerstone of our faith. Because nothing worth building on can sustain but Jesus Christ. He is the one that will outlast time because he is above time. And so Jesus says, upon this rock, the rock of ages, I will build my, in the original language, ecclesia, ecclesia, where we get the word church. 